Hey guys, it's me Cubix. Sorry that I look like a mess. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, but we have this massive box here. A lot of you didn't think I would actually do it. A couple of videos ago I said I'd buy a mystery cube for every 100 likes that that video got. Uh, specifically a $35 mystery cube. Um, that video got 2,600 likes within a week, so <laughs> I bought 26 mystery cubes, and here they are. Hey guys, Editor Cubics here. So I was editing the video and I realized that the unboxing was actually not super exciting because a lot of the puzzles I just couldn't even solve. Uh, so I just kind of said that they were cool. But if that's what you're into and you want to see the fresh reactions of me taking a cube out of box and seeing what it is, I actually did finish editing that video and I have it uploaded as an unlisted video. So if that's what you're interested in and you just want to see the pure reactions and unboxings, that video is uploaded and it's the first link in the description. So just go ahead and click that. You don't have to watch this video. Also in that unlisted video, there's kind of a sneak peek for what's to come in future videos that I think is actually very, very exciting. So there's some incentive for all of you to go watch that, but specifically if you're only interested in the unboxings, you can skip this video and just go to that one and then you know, you'll get what you wanted. So in this video, I wanted to kind of show all the puzzles in better lighting, give you guys a better idea of what you can get with these mystery puzzle purchases, and also give my overall thoughts about these $35 mystery puzzles because you know I did buy 26 of them, so I feel like I'm kind of an expert now. But before we jump into that, I do need to give kind of a disclaimer because I know people are going to be upset about it. I've already gotten a little bit of flack about this, um, so I kind of want to just address this and be done with it. Yes, I did buy these cubes with my own money, but I am also sponsored by the cubicle, which means that there's some incentive for the cubicle to send me things that are potentially better than what you might get. And so maybe the smarter thing to do would have been to order these cubes under a pseudonym. And I think that's what Cubehead did. But, you know, some people are not quite as smart. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just didn't even think about that. Okay. But here's the thing. In hindsight, that wouldn't have been a good idea anyway, because who else in the world bought 26 mystery cubes. I can guarantee you that I'm the only person in the world who bought 26 mystery puzzles. So even with a fake name, they would have known who it was because I had made that video. Also on top of that, I, I bought 26 cubes, right? So there's only so many mystery puzzles that can be bought. And full honesty, when I saw that it was getting to around 2000 likes. So I, when I had to buy 20 of these cubes, I actually tried to buy the entire stock because if the entire stock was only 30 cubes or something, you know, there's not a huge difference between buying 26 and 30. So I was just going to literally buy the entire stock so that there would be no complaints about whether or not there was fair treatment. It turns out that the stock was larger than I was willing to pay for these things. And also full transparency, they did pack it such that there were no duplicates. So every single cube is unique in this box. So now I know all of you pessimists out there are saying, oh, that's unfair treatment because if I bought it, there'd be duplicates. Because there are no duplicates, you can actually see a wider variety or a wider range of the puzzles that you might get if you're interested in purchasing these cubes yourself. Also, I'll have a running tally of how much each cube is actually worth in the bottom of the screen. And you'll see at the end that I actually got shafted on a couple of these anyway. So it's, I think it's overall pretty fair. If I had only bought one or two cubes, then I think the concerns are super valid. But I think given the circumstances where I bought 26 cubes, it was obvious who I was. And also, you know, I'm showing a huge range of the puzzles. It's fine. And if you still don't believe me and you think that there's this weird conspiracy going on where the cubicle just wants to like promote the mystery puzzles over anything else in their store, here's how you can watch this video. Use this video as an upper bound. And actually, if you think about this video that way, you'll see at the end of this video why that's super silly because, well, just watch to the end. But for the rest of you who just want to see cubes, um, yeah, let's just get right into it. <laughs> Okay, so let's get right into it. I'll start with the minx-ish shaped puzzles. So starting off the list, the first cube that I got is a Shengxiao Gigaminx. This is the first Gigaminx that I've ever owned, and I think it looks awesome. We also got a Shengxiao Master Kilominx, so this is basically the 4x4 version. Fun fact, Kilominx is actually one of my favorite puzzles to solve, especially for non-WCA ones. I think it's really, really fun, and yeah, I'm excited to solve this a lot. This is a Tripum Megaminx ball, so I assume you saw this exactly like a Megaminx, it's just that there's stickers now instead of actual sides of the pieces. This puzzle turns really well. I believe that this cube is the Diane 16-axis hexadecagon. 
for the longest time, I thought that this was a Megaminx with like pillowed sides until I realized that there were actually <laughs> six sides here and then five sides here. Um, this puzzle does not turn super well, but it looks really cool. Also kind of interesting is that I think there are only four sticker colors. But yeah, I think this looks really neat. And then this crazy cube, I believe is the Diane MF8 Crazy Megaminx Plus Saturn version. This cube really does not turn very well. You know, it looks cool, and I'm all for these kinds of puzzles that are just really unique. It's also very, very heavy. This is the Teamer Royal Pyraminx. This is a crazy puzzle. Um, it turns really well. It's basically like a five-layered Pyraminx kind of puzzle. We also got a Carl's Bubloid 5x5x4. This is a very, very interesting puzzle. I, I don't know that I fully understand how this even turns. I feel like there's probably some weird ways that this cube can can turn, but um, for now, it you know, obviously you can twist the corners. I feel like this should maybe be able to jumble. Someone can tell me in the comments below, but this is a very, very beautiful puzzle, and it's also just really high quality. This is one of my favorite ones. This is an MF8 Void Megaminx Pentultimate. It's kind of dark, so it's hard to see, but I'll shine it in the light so you can see here. Um, it is a void puzzle. It's currently not stickered. It did come with stickers, but uh, just currently not stickered. Definitely kind of a nice desk toy to just sit around, though. I like it. Next, we have an MF8 Elite Skewb. This puzzle's really, really cool. It turns really well. The colors are just super vibrant. I love how this looks. Next, I believe this is the MF8 Duo Axis Cube. It certainly looks like an Axis Cube, and I think it can also turn in this direction, so it's gotta be the Duo Axis. This cube is insane to me. I, I don't know that I would ever be able to solve this. Like, look at this, this is crazy. This is two turns, and I'm already kinda lost. Crazy. Next, one of my favorites of the entire unboxing, this is the Mefferts gear egg. This thing just turns really really well and it's just it's kind of fun just to like fidget with. Yeah this is awesome. Next we have the Fang Shi Lim Cube Morpho Helena. I think. There's no branding on this cube so it's it's a little bit hard for me to tell but this puzzle is insane too so when you turn it you can see that there's actually internal pieces here, so I assume that these pieces can pop out eventually when the puzzle jumbles. Like, look at that. It's crazy. Super complicated. This is the Tony Fisher Golden Dodecahedron. I'm really happy to have this puzzle. It just looks really, really sleek. I love the gold on black, and I mean, overall, this is just a classic puzzle. Really happy to have this now. All right, and now we will jump into cuboids and just other kind of cube-shaped things. So first we have the Tom Z 6x4x4, or 4x4x6, and you can see that I already kind of tried solving this. This is really fun. At first, the turning was kind of stiff, but now that I've used it for maybe half an hour, uh, the turning is a lot better. I'm trying to solve this without looking at any tutorials. Maybe I'll make a video on it at some point. I, I don't know. But it's really, really fun, and I've been enjoying this one a lot. All right, and now for all the cubic puzzles, we'll start with this guy. This is a Sheng Xiao 9x9. This is my first 9x9 ever, and this cube turns surprisingly well. It's not magnetic. I don't particularly like the colors, but for a 9x9, it's pretty awesome. I really, really like this one. We also got the younger brother. This is the Xingxiao 8x8, also my first 8x8. This puzzle doesn't turn all that well, if I'm being honest. It's kind of expected. Even layered cubes tend to not turn as well as odd layered cubes, but it's still really cool to have. And then we also got small cubes. Well, just one. This is the Geeker 2x2 Smart Cube. It's the only 2x2 smart cube out there, I believe. It's not something that I would personally probably use because one, I don't like 2x2, and two, I don't really like smart cube 2x2s. 
No, in all honesty, I think that this is a really nice puzzle. It's very, very well made. It's just not something that I would personally use. And now, I know the majority of you are just interested in WCA puzzles anyway, so here we go. Here are all the WCA puzzles. We'll start with this guy. This is the X-Men Shadow 6x6. This is the version 1, and it's non-magnetic. For a non-magnetic 6x6, it's pretty darn good, but... Of course, by today's standards, it's a little bit outdated. So this puzzle is actually not worth it because I think you can just buy it new from the cubicle for $33.99. So I basically paid $35 for this. So bad deal on my part, but you know, whatever. <laughs> to kind of make up for it, we also got a Moyu GTS uh, Aoshi 6x6. And this one's great. So it's magnetic, it turns really well. I love the feel of it. It's kind of sandy and I'm kind of partial to stickered cubes. So I'm actually kind of happy that it's stickered and that's my cat. This is the Moyu Aofu GTS M. So it's a seven by seven magnetic. This cube is amazing. It turns so, so well. I love this one. I guess we may as well keep going with Moyu puzzles. So this is the five by five. This is the Aochuang five by five WRM. You gotta go. I actually have this in sticker list. It's one of my favorite cubes. Uh, it's my main 5x5. It just turns really well, and 3x3 stage feels effortless to me. Love this cube. Going down the line of Moyu puzzles, we also got the WRM 4x4. This is also my main for 4x4. Uh, I have it in sticker list, but now I have it in sticker as well. This cube is crazy. Once it's tensioned and lubed, it can actually corner cut 45 degrees. It's insane. Even unlubed, untensioned, it's awesome. Switching brands, we also got the Volk 5x5. I've been wanting this cube for a really long time, so I'm really happy to finally get this. The magnets are a really, really nice strength. It's kind of subtle, but I can feel that they do something. I also really like white cubes. It reminds me of, well, V-cube days. I'm kind of a boomer. But this puzzle feels amazing. And if there's one thing that I would change, I would probably change the white stickers to black stickers just because it's easier for me to recognize. But this puzzle's also really great. All these cubic ones, the WCA puzzles, they all turn super well. So we also got the Volk 4x4. This is in stickerless. This is the strong magnet variety, which is okay. I, I don't really care either way. It turns really well. I like the sound of it. But technically, this cube is also not $35. It's $34.99. And then we're down to the last two cubes, which are 3 by 3s and they're both GAN puzzles. And there's some stuff to talk about here. So first, we have the GAN Air M. I made a video about this cube a long time ago, before it was even released, saying how I don't want this cube because I hate how GAN named this product. It was super confusing. Everyone thought it was a flagship, and it wasn't. It was basically the XS Lite, and because of that, I just didn't want to support the cube and purchase it. And here we are, I have accidentally bought this cube and, you know, frankly, it's it's a pretty darn good cube, but just the ethics of it and ugh. And then finally, the last cube in this massive unboxing is kind of interesting because it's one of my favorite cubes. This is the GAN 356 Air, not the Air M, not the Air UM, not the Air SM. I, I don't know how many Airs there are. No, this is just the standard... 356 Air. I think it's at least like the master professional edition, but in any case, it's the 356 Air. It's not magnetic. It has the really old core design where it has that screw in GES nut. And this cube is worth $25. So I paid $35 for a $25 cube. I actually think this was a mistake because in the packing list that they included, this is supposed to be the Air SM 2019 edition, which is a $40 cube. But this is not magnetic, this is just the standard air, and yeah, it's it's worth 25 bucks. That being said, I'm not super upset about it because this was one of my favorite, if not my most favorite, non-magnetic 3x3 ever made. And I used to have one, but I gave it away to a friend, so I'm actually really happy to <laughs> kind of get it back now. And you know, I think for non-magnetic 3x3s, this is a classic. This will go down in history as probably one of the best 3x3s ever made uh, without magnets. It's just a really, really good cube. So with all that being said, in total, I got about $1,026 worth of puzzles in this unboxing, which comes out to be on average about $39.50 per puzzle. 
and I pay $35 for each puzzle. So, so on average, I got about four and a half dollars more puzzle than I paid for, if that makes sense. Which is why if you think that there's some special treatment here, it's pretty obvious that there's not because that's not like an incredible deal, right? Like $5 off a $35 puzzle is not the best deal in history of cubicle deals. So anyway, if you're pessimistic and you think that the cubicle just sent me better things than other people, hopefully this kind of disproves that. And if you still don't believe me, then, you know, I guess you can expect to get puzzles that are basically just worth market value. But now that I've unboxed 26 of these mystery puzzles, uh, at least at the $35 tier, would I recommend them? It kind of depends on who you are as a person. If you're into WCA puzzles, there's a good chance you'll get something that's pretty good. And especially for the big cubes, they're still kind of modern. But if you're interested in 3x3 specifically, I think at the $35 tier, you're probably not going to get a whole lot. You might get older flagships, but... For the most part, I don't think that they're going to be super up to date. You might get really lucky and get that UV coated GAN 11M Pro, but um, you know, clearly I did not get that. It's up to you if you want to take that risk. But I think where the mystery puzzles come in really clutch is if you're into non WCA events, then I think you could get a really good deal because most of the non WCA puzzles ended up being about 40, 42 bucks. So that's actually a really good deal. So if you're a puzzle collector and you want something that's not WCA events, then the mystery puzzles it's actually a pretty good chance for you to get a good deal on some unique puzzles. But if you're like me and you care more about WCA puzzles, I don't know. I think going for lower tiers might be better, especially if you care about three by threes, just because there aren't really that many three by threes that are more than 35 bucks anyway. So this is probably not the tier, but if you're into big cubes for WCA events, then, then I think I got a pretty good deal. <laughs> These are all really good puzzles um, that I would use as mains. So yeah, it's up to you, but in any case, you know, I think it's a really fun way to spend money. <laughs> um, but all that being said, um, I probably will not buy a new puzzle for a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, toodles.